now your 19 first alert forecast certified most accurate since 2004. Good Saturday morning and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Sia New Yorker here with 19 first alert meteorologist Andy Chilean. Day after Groundhog Day, spring yes. is coming. <laughs> That's what he said. Both <laughs> Buckeye Chuck and Punxsutawney Phil said yeah. early spring. And well, uh, we had it a couple days ago. I know yesterday was kind of back to that winter feel. And today will be a little bit cooler as well. First, fair, everywhere. 19 News starts now. The moment things went from bad to worse, NTSB releasing never seen before video of the controlled burn of hazardous materials in East Palestine. Now this really gives us new perspective of the magnitude of the toxic fumes launched into the community. Today marks one year since the Norfolk Southern train came off the tracks in East Palestine. Many neighbors still left with the same questions about long-term health effects. Now a local university is hoping to ease their worries. 19's Caitlin McCarthy spoke to one of the school's researchers along with a woman still without answers after experiencing symptoms from the derailment. It's been a whirlwind over the last 12 months. The small town was flipped upside down, then posed with the challenge of recovering from this disaster. Although there has been some progress on several different fronts, Community members are still frustrated with the lack of resources available to make those improvements. There are many events today commemorating the anniversary of this train derailment, including the East Palestine Environmental Film Festival. The festival aims to highlight the devastating aftermath of the tragedy through 17 films. Festival director Robert Corna said the idea for a film festival came to him while he was making a documentary about the derailment. And tonight, the Unity Council for the Derailment will host a Together in Unity event. There will be a live painting, a digital projection, and a ritual of remembrance. The night gives the community an opportunity to remember and grieve and talk about what is still needed in East Palestine. The event is at McKim's Honey Vine and Winery. That's on East Taggart Street. It starts at 7.30, it ends at 9.30. A grieving mother turning her 14-year-old son murder into a call to action. She's determined to have the suspected killer charged as an adult. Our Michelle Nix with the details of this heartbreaking story. Breaking news this morning, three hurt in a stabbing attack Saturday morning at a railway station in Paris. A security guard tackled the attacker who was then taken into police custody. All right, so it is dry out there. Mm -hmm. No snow. Yes, no snow. No, no wind. Rain. No rain. The wind's not too bad. It's, it's not too bad. It really isn't. Now, we've got the clouds. I know a lot of us probably want to see that sunshine yeah, come back that we, we saw a couple days ago. That was so nice. And we will begin to get that as we head later today and especially tomorrow. 19 News. First, fair, everywhere. Happening today, Cleveland Public Library breaks ground on its reimagination of the Glenville branch. The branch will feature a digital innovation center, a creative, collaborative and educational space where Glenville residents can access software, emerging technologies, STEM education and workforce and career development opportunities. The project is part of Cleveland Public Library's 10 year plan to build or renovate neighborhood libraries to enhance the visitor experience. The Great Big Home Show, the Great Big Home and Garden Show is happening today at the IX Center. There are more than 450 exhibits and demonstrations. You can also talk with experts in kitchen, bath, flooring, landscaping, really any home project. The show runs through February 11th. It was someone's loved one, but for nearly 50 years, this man found in Cleveland has only been known as John Doe. What will it take to find his name? We're profiling John and Jane Doe cases here in Northeast Ohio in the hopes of bringing answers to their families. Investigator Sarah Goldenberg continues our series Unidentified.
If you know who Merwin Ave John Doe was, please call the Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner's Office at the number right there on your screen. 19 News, first, fair, everywhere. Welcome back. February is American Heart Month. A new study finds more than 50% of Americans don't even know that heart disease is the number one killer in our country. A local nurse is trying to change that statistic through education, and her story is truly one of inspiration. Here's Nicole Versansky. I like that day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's dry out there. No snow, no rain. Groundhog says spring is coming. Yes, early. both Groundhog say and spring coming early this year. Live from the 19 News Studios, driven by the injury attorneys at Kissling, Nestico, and Reddick. This is 19 News. The 66th Grammy Awards will be handed out tomorrow, and one artist leads all others with the most nominations. David Daniel has the story in Hollywood Minute. See you. Good morning. Coming up, we will have your eye opener and all this morning's headlines. 19 News. First, fair, everywhere. A new and rare discovery of tree fossils has opened a window into what the world was like when Earth's first forests were beginning to evolve. According to a new study in the journal Current Biology, archaeologists found five tree fossils buried alive by an earthquake 350 million years ago. The co-authors of the study unearthed the first of the ancient trees back in 2017 while doing field work in a rock quarry in the Canadian province of New Brunswick. One of the specimens they discovered is among just a handful of cases in the entire plant fossil record. The fossil reveals the tree could have had about 250 leaves directly attached to its trunk, each measuring nearly six feet. The enormous canopy gave the tree a shape reminiscent of Dr. Seuss's trefella trees from the Lorax. Wow. <laughs> Pretty cool. That is very cool. I love like history of that. All these and interesting, like that. yeah, and we're, we're going to Dr. Seuss world, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Pretty interesting there. <laughs> well, overall, uh, you know, obviously no, you know, blooming trees or anything like that. Yeah. But it's a sign that, well, we're spring not too terribly far away. Mm -hmm. If you like the springy feel or at least the dry weather, soak in these next several days. All right, enjoy. Thanks so much for watching 19 News this morning. CLE, the weekend is next, followed by CBS Saturday morning. Have a great rest of your day.